let us start a new chapter improvement in food resources now need for increasing food production as we know our population is growing one more than 1 billion and it is still a continuous process still it is growing we will need more than a billion tons of grain every year to feed this growing population and since increasing the area of land for cultivation is limited because land resource is limited we know it is necessary to increase the production efficiency of crops and also live stocks now uh, for production efficiency of crops and live stocks uh, certain scientific uh, adopt uh, scientific practices or adoption of some scientific management practices is required such as to improve crop yield then undertaking mixed farming intercropping and integrated farming practices like combining agriculture with livestock or animal husbandry means keeping animals like poultry we can develop fisheries we can develop bee keeping etc now different types of crops crops are of different types like cereals pulses oil vegetables fodder crops cereals like rice wheat maize millet sorghum these provides carbohydrate or energy giving food now pulses like pea beans gram lentils all provide us body building protein oil seeds uh, we use are groundnut sesame castor oil mustard linseed sunflower all this gives the oil and it provide the fat or it is a source of fat vegetables spices and fruits provides us essential vitamins and mineral along with also small amount of carbohydrate fat and proteins some of the crops like barsi oats sudan grass are grown as food or fodder crops for livestock or animal like goat buffalo cow etc different crops require different climatic conditions temperature and duration of sunlight also known as photo period so according on the basis of this climatic condition crops are classified into two major category one is kharif crops and other is rabi crops kharif kharif crops are crops grown during rainy season from june it is sown um, in june and it is harvested in october some of the plants are paddy or rice soya bean maize pigeon pea green gram black gram and cotton and another category is rabi crops these are the crops grown during winter season it is sown during november december and it is harvested during april uh, some of the examples are wheat gram pea mustard linseed etc improvement in crop yield how the yield or production of uh, crop can be increased so some of the main activities which is associated are crop variety improvement then second is crop production improvement and crop protection management first of all crop variety improvement in crop variety improvement it is done by selecting good varieties of crop it is done by hybridization what is hybridization it is the crossing or technique of crossing between genetically dissimilar or different plants to obtain cro crops having useful characteristics like good characteristics is disease resistance plant uh, will not get a disease easily they will be of good quality production will be of good quality uh, high yield or quantity will be also more so hybridization may be intervarietal means between two varieties they are interspecific when the species are of same genus and also it can be intergeneric between two genera different genera another ways of improving crop variety is by introducing a gene to obtain the desired characteristics this produce genetically modified crops or hybrid crops why improvement in crop is needed it is done for the following reason for higher yield to increase the productivity of crop per acre the land uh, is fixed and we have to increase the productivity second reason is biotic and abiotic resistance means the hybrid crops are resistance 
to the biotic factors like insects, diseases, etc. They will not be easily eaten by insects and it will also not cause the disease easily. And also some of the abiotic factors like drought, they will be grown in limited source of water, saline water if it is available, also they will grow if extreme heat or cold is there also they will resist. So, uh, biotic and abiotic resistance crops are yield. Change in maturity duration. The duration between sowing and harvesting is also reduced. So, farmer can uh, easily grow multiple crop during a year. Then wider adaptive liberty to grow crop in different climatic condition. Now, plants are uh, having the wider adaptability. They can grow in extreme of the temperatures, either heat or cold. They will grow in different conditions. And desirable agronomic characters, characters like tallness, more branching are useful for fodder crops and dwarfness, shortness is desi desirable for cereal crops. So, what type of crop we are obtaining? It will be uh, modified accordingly. Crop production management. Crop production management includes nutrient management, irrigation and cropping management. First is nutrient management. As we all know, plant require nutrient for the growth and production. So, plant get nutrients from air, water and soil. There are 16 nutrients required by plant for their proper growth. Air supplies oxygen, carbon dioxide, water supplies hydrogen and remaining 13 nutrients are obtained from the soil. So, soil is the source of the nutrient for the plants. Now, among the 16 nutrients required by plant, 6 are required in large quantities or more quantities. They are known as macronutrients. The macronutrients are uh, NPK that is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium and sulfur. And other 7 which are required in very small or trace amount, they are known as micronutrients. Now, soil can be enriched by supplying nutrient in the form of manures and fertilizers. The micronutrients are iron, magnesium, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and chlorine. Manure. Manure is prepared by decomposition of plants and animal waste. It contains organic matter and nutrients. It helps to increase soil fertility. It also helps to reduce use of fertilizers and recycle farm waste and protect the environment. So, we can say manures are the organic in nature, means obtained from the living things. There are two types of manure. They are compost and green manure. What is compost? It is prepared by decomposition of plants and animal waste in compost pits. Compost prepared by using earthworm is called vermicompost. compost. And compost are rich in organic matter and nutrients. Another is green manure. Before sowing seeds in field, some green plants like sun, hemp, gore, etc. are mixed in soil by ploughing. And these plants turn into green manure which make the soil rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. Along with manure, another is the fertilizers. Fertilizers are chemical substances. It is made commercially in the factories. They supply nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and also help to increase the crop yield. Fertilizer should be used only in required amount. Excessive use of fertilizer can reduce soil fertility and also change the nature of the soil and also causes the water pollution. Irrigation. The supply of water to crop is called irrigation. Water is necessary for the growth of plant and it also helps to increase crop yield. Now, different kinds of irrigation system which is used to supply water to agricultural lands are well, canals, river, tanks, check dams, etc. Let us see one by one. Well, we all know uh, the type of wells are dug well and tube wells. In dug wells, water is collected from water bearing strata and in tube wells, water is collected from deeper strata. Another is the canal. In this system, canal receive water from reservoir like check dams uh, or large rivers and distribute it into the fields. Another method is river lift systems. In this uh, river lift systems, 
uh, water is lifted from river to irrigate field close to rivers now tank system small storage reservoir which supply water to field another is the check dams which are used to stop rain water from flowing away and help to increase ground water levels and reduce soil erosion to get maximum profit cropping pattern should be kept in the mind before sowing the seeds now different ways of growing crops are used for maximum benefit these includes mixed cropping intercropping and crop rotation what is mixed cropping growing of two or more crops simultaneously at the same time in the same field examples are along with wheat we can grow gram along with wheat also we can grow mustard groundnut can be combined with sunflower etc this reduces the risk even if one crop fails another method is intercropping it is growing two or more crops simultaneously in the same field in alternate rows example one row is of maize another row we can sow the soya bean one row of millet along with that cow pea we can grow so crop with different nutrient requirements are selected and this help in better use of nutrient also and prevent spreading of diseases to all plants of the same crop then uh, third method is crop rotation it is growing different crops in same field in succession means one after another growing leguminous crop after growing cereal crops help to increase soil fertility as leguminous crop there is Uh, nitrogen fixation takes place in the root nodules of the leguminous plant with the help of rhizobium bacterium if crop rotation is done properly two or three crops can be grown in a year profitably crop protection management now crops in the field are damaged by weeds insects pests and diseases weeds are unwanted plant which grow in the field along with the main plant example are xanthium parthenium cyperinus rotundus etc they compete with the crop for food space and sunlight and use nutrients and reduce the crop yield of the main crop now insects pest also damage to the root stem and leaves also suck cell sap and bore into stems and fruits they can reduce crop yield diseases in plants are caused by pathogens like viruses bacteria fungus and reduce the crop yield weeds insects pest and diseases can be controlled by using the chemicals weeds can be controlled by weedicides pest can be controlled by pesticides and disease causing organisms can be controlled by fungicides now they are spread on crop plants and used for treating seeds also and soil also since these chemicals are very poisonous excessive use of these chemical can cause the environmental pollution and nature of the soil can also be damaged the last step is storage of grains the factors responsible for damage and loss of grains are biotic factors like bacteria fungus insects rodents etc and also some of the abiotic factors like moisture temperature in place of storage rain etc before storage the grains are cleaned and dried in sunlight to remove moisture and storage places are fumigated to kill the pest animal husbandry animal husbandry is the scientific management of animal life stocks including their feeding breeding and disease control animal farming includes cattle sheep goat poultry and fish farming now cattle farming cattle farming is done for main two main purposes they are for milk production and for farm labor milk producing animals are called milch animals and those used for farm labors are called trot animals now milk production depend upon duration of the lactation period the period of milk production after birth of the calf now milk production can be increased by increasing the lactation period now foreign breeds like jersey brown swiss have long lactation periods and local breeds red red sindhi sahiwal are resistant to disease so they can be cross breed to get animals with both the qualities 
Cattle shelters should be clean and well ventilated with sloping floors for easy cleaning. Then cattle feed should include roughage that contains fiber and concentrates that contain protein and other nutrients. Now cattle diseases are caused by parasites, bacteria and viruses. External parasites causes skin diseases. Internal parasites like worms affect stomach and intestines and flukes damage the liver. Vaccinations are given to protect from viral and bacterial diseases. And it is poultry farming. Poultry farming is done for egg production and chicken meat. Now, improved poultry breeds are developed to produce layers uh, for eggs and broilers for meat. Now, crossbreeding between Indian varieties like Asil and foreign varieties like Leghorn is developed and done to produce a new varieties. For good production of poultry birds, they are given proper nutrition and kept in hygienic conditions and also proper temperature is maintained. Broiler chickens are fed with vitamins, proteins and fat rich food for better growth. They are for the purpose of meat and poultry fowls are affected by diseases caused by virus, bacteria, fungus and parasites. They are protected from disease by proper sanitation, spraying disinfectants and vaccinations. Fish production, scientifically pisciculture. Fish is a source of animal protein in our food. There are two ways of obtaining fish. They are from natural sources called capture fishing and from fish farming called culture fishery. The water source of fishes can be seawater or marine and fresh water like river, ponds, lakes, etc. Marine fisheries. The popular marine fishes varieties are pomfret, mackerel, tuna, sardines, etc. They are caught by fishing net from boats. And some marine fishes are farmed in seawater. They include prawns, mullets, pearl spots, mussels, oysters, etc. We get pearls from oysters. And inland fisheries, culture fisheries done in fresh water and brackish water where seawater and fresh water are mixed together. Sometimes fish culture, culture is done in combination with paddy crop in the field. This is called composite fish culture. The common fishes in inland fish farms are Rahu, Katla, Mrigal, Grass Carp, Silver Carp, Common Carp, etc. Beekeeping or Apiculture Beekeeping is done to obtain honey and wax. Honey is used as source of energy and also it has medicinal values. Wax is used in medicinal preparations and also for making polishes and cosmetic products. The local varieties of bees used for honey production are the Indian bee, rock bee and little bee. An Italian variety of bee is being used for large scale production of honey. The bee collect nectar from flowers and it convert it into honey in the bee hives. Bees are artificially grown as apiaries and the honey is extracted by machine called honey extractor. 